tonight, we are being invited to become children of light and to carry that light within us and to carry that light out of here, out into the world. Not to put it down or extinguish it, but for it to burn within us so that we can be those hands, feet, hearts, and mind of God alive in this world and see in each other a God who is living and speaking and acting and cares about us. As an illustration of what it's like to create light in darkness, I want to share a very close story with you. There's a family who had a 23-year-old son. They're from this area, and they used to like to do a lot of camping and a lot of outdoor activity. Their son very tragically died. They were connected to the Tin Mountain Conservation Center. And if you go down there to the Great Hall, and you look at the chimney at the end of that room where so many celebrations, weddings, and other services have been held, you will see that it is a work of art. Each stone has been carefully placed. There are pinwheels carved in part of it. And right in the center, as the throat of the chimney narrows, there's a white stone placed that looks so much like a star shining in the night. This young man's family decided that they would take on the project of helping design and build that chimney. They worked with the mason to help formulate the actual fireplace and the setting of the stones. And then they came and they put their own hands to work, putting layer after layer up. And the rock that looks like a star came from a place where they had camped for so long and had so many special memories of their child. They set it like a light, high in the chimney, where they can think of him and where his life is transformed into something that has a legacy. Into this place, fires can be kindled, people's lives can be warmed and light can be cast. And the love that was alive for so long and the grief that was so hard to bear was placed stone by stone in that room to become something more. So that even in a place of darkness, this family modeled a way to find light and transformation and to connect their own lives and their son's life with something that changes the world and continues to shape and change the world right here in this valley. It's a place you can go and touch. You can run your hands on the stones. You can feel the fire when it's lit. You can look at the white rock and think about the young man's life and his family's love for him. <clears throat> the lights of Advent, including the Christ light that we light tonight, are real. And they are tangible, and they are at work in our world. And if you are feeling overwhelmed by what is happening either in your own life or in the world as a larger place, remember the work that must be done to help change and stabilize the world is done not alone, but together with God's love present in every movement and every breath. And it is placed stone by stone, course by course, over time. Tonight you will see what it means when we light all the candles and we turn out the lights and how we can fill a place with our light and how our individual lights, when raised together, change the world and brighten it and warm it and make it a welcoming and a safe and hospitable place, at least for the space of one wick. Tonight you are invited to become the light of God in the world as we welcome the light of God into the world.
Blessed be God.